Hi, I'm Tom Meehawk, and this is Housing Basics. This is the last video I'm recording today, and these are part of a series of shorter versions of versions of the of videos that I've done before. The older versions had two, sometimes three videos uh, per section. This has only one, and this one on housing is going to be about renting, owning, which to pick, and that sort of thing. Um, I will put the slides in the YouTube video in the notes so you can uh, download them, look at the slides, mark them up, make copies, print them, all that sort of thing. Okay, um, so here we go. So these are homes and apartments, some famous ones. The middle one, for example, is the Friends uh, home or apartment, rather, that Chandler, Joey, Monica, and Rachel lived in. On the left is, um, <coughs> excuse me, on the left is um, uh, a home, a starter home in Houston, Texas. On the right, is a, a, a home purchased by a Uber co-founder, $72.5 million. And in the lower left as the floor plan, you might remember this from the, the Friends TV show. How do I choose? When should I own, right? Depends on your stage in life, your personal preferences and your situation, how you spend your time and money affects your choices. I just spoke with a student over the weekend who works at Meta, used to be Facebook. He's uh, only just graduated, but he has a good salary and a guaranteed bonus, maybe a year-end bonus. And I, in talking to him about a number of planning issues, um, said, you know, you might consider buying a home. If you stay in this industry and uh, continue to make and uh, continue to grow your, your compensation, you could be 25 and be ready to buy a home if it's right for you and if it fits. So traditional financial recommendations are 25 to 30 percent of take home pay would be your cost or a home cost of about two and a half times your annual income. This can vary. If you live in like the student I just referenced that works at now Meta used to be Facebook. He's in Palo Alto. Things are super expensive there. Anyone living around near around New York City, um, any of the major cities. Uh, and certainly other areas in the country where housing is very expensive relative to incomes. So it can vary. Life stages are things like, are you young single, young, um, a, a couple with no children yet? Are you retired? Couple with uh, children no longer at home, which is, I guess, what my wife and I would be now, both working, children grown out of the house. So all this, these different stages um, characterize the kinds of living situation that you would find a best fit. Here's some alternatives, renting versus owning. And thanks to the sourcing the Kapoor, the, uh, Kapoor text, the 13th edition, these are, these are uh, examples of renting an apartment, a house, owning a new home, a previously owned home. There are lots of ways to satisfy your uh, residence needs. And um, here are a few examples with advantages and disadvantages. Comparing, renting and buying. So renting, advantages, it's easy to move. You have a lot of flexibility, right? No responsibilities for maintenance. When the toilet's backed up, when the ceiling leaks, when the furnace uh, blows up, it's someone else's problem, not yours. And that's a great thing. Uh, I own my own home now, I have for 25 years, 27 years, and every time something breaks, it's my problem. I'd rather have it be someone else's problem. And there's minimal financial commitment. Now, in fairness, you don't earn, you, know, you don't own, own anything of value. And so the longer you rent, the more you're, 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 uh, you're throwing money away in terms of ownership. But that's not to say that owning is always better than renting. There are people who've rent in large, rented in large cities that I've known that were much better off renting their whole career, perhaps. So disadvantages of renting, no tax benefits, mortgage interest is deductible when you own the property and live in it, uh, and, the second, and, and a second home vacation too, it depends. Um, but there are no tax benefits for renting. There are limitations regarding remodeling. If you wanna make a bigger kitchen, uh, you want to paint your walls, you're going to chance are you have to put them back at the color that they were when you moved in. Uh, no, maybe no animals, no pets, right? We have uh, cats and uh, cats are pretty self-sufficient, but you may not be able to have cats, may not be able to have dogs. 
if uh, you're renting. Now, when you own, when you buy, pride of ownership. I remember the first home I bought it. We, the, the kids were little then, and I remember they were in taking baths, and I was maybe just finished cutting the lawn. I don't remember, but I was outside, kind of tired. I'm leaning against the car in the driveway, and I look and see this big tree, and I went, dang, on. That's my tree. Now, I know that sounds maybe dopey, but you know, I had rented my whole life until that point. I was I was then probably in my middle 30s. And so, um, you know, this was my <laughs> this was my tree. And that was pretty, pretty exciting to me. Financial benefits. Homes tend to increase in value. You have deductibility of mortgage interest. You can deduct maybe putting in you know, energy efficient windows like the one back here and the one to, to my side over here. Um, solar panels, these kinds of things. Um, and you can improve your lifestyle. Put in a pool, put in a sauna, put in a backyard golf hole, you know, green or something like that, right? Negatives or disadvantages. Financial commitment. If you're going to move in three years, that's maybe not a good thing to buy a home and have to move in three years. If you're lucky and you bought in a good neighborhood or a good area, it might still work out fine. But you have a financial commitment. And if you can't sell the home, you have to keep making your mortgage payments if you have a mortgage. There could be higher living expenses than renting. When uh, last summer, for example, one of our outdoor air conditioning units, a condensing unit, uh, needed to be repaired. And it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't inexpensive. Probably four years ago, maybe five, we had to replace our, our refrigerator. We have a nice new refrigerator now, but boy, that wasn't inexpensive to replace. And it was a few weeks of work trying to get the right one, the right price, you know, all these things. Same thing with the air conditioning unit. It took a few weeks until we got it all figured out what we needed to buy. And limited mobility. As I said just a little earlier, you may not be able to move right away when you want. So renting, advantages, mobility, easier to move, few or no maintenance and repair responsibilities, modest financial commitment, right? Disabil disadvantages, no tax benefits, nothing deductible, no ownership, no equity. You don't have anything other than a place to live. Remodeling and restructuring. There might be limitations and pets limitations. Decorating. I want to paint my walls maroon. Well, they may need to be back at white or beige when you leave. I want granite countertops or new appliances in my kitchen so I can really cook well. Well, you may not be able to do that. You may have to take, I mean, you obviously have to take what you get when you rent, when you show up. And a security deposit. Challenges, getting most or all of your money back. I can remember when my kids were, in fairness, in university apartments, but man, any little thing, you know, just a little fix around the window was a few hundred dollars. Something I would have done, you know, very quickly and easily myself with some caulking and, you know, a putty knife became very expensive. So getting your money back can be a challenge. Read your lease. Most have common themes. When you've read two or three of them, you'll know the terms, but know when the rent is due. Who picks up the trash? Where does it have to go? When can the owner come in and inspect the property without an announcement, with a 24-hour notice? Know those things. If you get to know your landlord, you may be able to, if then they don't allow pets, for example, you may be able to bring a pet in if you ask them. Or maybe a cat is easier than a dog or something like that. The first time will be challenging, but the more leases you read, the more often you rent, the easier it'll be for you. Know the rules about security deposit. Well, I just said this, rental dates, fees for late payments, uh, when the landlord can enter the property, what purposes a warning is required, these kinds of things. Your lease will tell you. Advantages of home ownership. Pride of ownership, lifestyle stability, you're part of the community. When our kids were middle school and high school age, elementary school too, you know, we felt part of the community. We were at community events, sporting events, dance events, cheerleading events. You know, these things were revolved around our children's activities and the other people in the community, the schools they attended. You feel very connected to the, to the community. Financial, mortgage interest is deductible. Property tax is deductible. Lots of other deductibles. Lifestyle, indulge in your individuality. Paint the way you want. Put in features in the home that you want. Put in skylights, pool, master, master bedroom and bathroom, those kinds of things. The disadvantages are you have limited mobility. Once you're in, you know, it's not that easy to just get out and move. Financial, it's expensive, the cost of the down payment. Home values can decrease. Obtaining a, and servicing a mortgage, 
property taxes go up. You know, there's always something breaking. You know, so you have to be financially ready to work hard or have the background to be able to afford it. And expect regular repairs, regular maintenance and upkeep. There's always something breaking, something requires repair. Mortgages. When you most people borrow to purchase a home and they come in terms of 30, 10, 15, uh, 30, 20, 15, 10 years and others, uh, these are fixed mortgages where the rate doesn't change during that time. Adjustable mortgages come in one, three, five, seven, and 10 years. This is the period of fixed rate. And then after that, it adjusts. Sometimes it used to be annually. Now I've seen them every six months. And then the rate varies subject to some limits and some caps. Loan is amortizing. It's an amortizing loan, meaning that payments are part interest, which is income to borrow the money to the lender, the bank typically, and part principal, which is part pay down of the amount you borrowed. In the beginning, there's almost all interest and very little of the, of the amount that you borrowed is being paid down. Over time, the longer you're into your mortgage, the more of the principal you're paying down the less interest you're paying. Of course, the financial institution gets paid most of their income up front, and you get more of a deduction then. You get to pay down the, the uh, principal balance more toward the end. With a mortgage, your home is collateral for the loan, which means that if you don't make payments over some period of time, not a month or two, but over some period of time, several months, the bank, or the lender will take your home. What that does is it gives people an incentive at all costs to make a payment, make their payments on their mortgage. It also allows banks and lenders more security, more comfort that they'll be repaid so they can offer mortgages at a lower rate, which benefits everyone being able to get a mortgage. Collateral means a lender has a claim on the ownership and the, of the home and if the payments aren't made, the lender takes up. They don't want to own your home. They want you to pay your mortgage off. If they get your home, they have to sell it. So they don't want to do that. They want you to pay your mortgage. That's why they evaluate carefully who they lend to. Watch your fees at the close, indicated by the APR, not simply the interest rate. Shorter loan terms typically mean higher monthly payments and less total cost because you pay less interest. Lower interest rates mean lower monthly payments and total less cost in general, right? Pay less if you have a shorter loan term, pay less if you have lower interest rates. Other types of loans, government programs like VA, Federal Housing Authority, typically offer better uh, rates, higher acceptances. They're interest only loans which uh, don't reduce the loan balance at all and are dangerous if the home value drops. Be very cautious about those. Many people borrow with the home equity line of credit. When you develop equity or when you have equity in your home, which is the difference between your mortgage amount and the value of the home, you can borrow against it, some percentage of the value of that equity. It can be used to pay college tuition, put an addition on your home, buy a boat. Um, be careful, it can be expensive when it's interest only and they have to be paid back um, often over shorter periods, sometimes over shorter periods of time than a regular 30-year mortgage. Reverse mortgages are the, offer the ability to borrow against your equity. You see these advertised on television. Sometimes older, this might be appropriate for older people who have one of their main assets is their home and they borrow against their equity and receive it regularly like income. And um, you know, ultimately when they pass, the home is sold, the mortgage, the loan is paid off, and the balance is distributed to heirs. So this has been housing selection and financing. Thank you for watching. This is a short version of an earlier video I did. Um, I'm Tom Mihawk, and this is the last one of the ones that we've been recording today. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy these. Take care.